Here we have a SAT math question. Okay, let's go to the information. The given quartic function 54 times x to the fourth part positive 219 times x square positive 105 as factors in the form of k times a x square positive b uh, times a x square positive d. If a, b, c, d and k are integers, what is the smallest possible value of a, b? So here we have a quartic function. Quartic function is nothing but the function uh, which has a degree that is the highest exponent of uh, 4. Okay, now uh, the quartic function is there and also uh, the quartic function has a factors in this form. So, okay, now what I need to do is I have to factor this quartic function so that uh, I can compare uh, the factors and I'll be able to get the values of a and b and I can get the smallest possible value of uh, a, b according to the question. Okay, now uh, let me take uh, the given quart uh, quartic function that is uh, 54 x square, sorry, not x square, x to the fourth power. Uh, positive 219 x square positive 105. Okay, now the first thing what I'm going to do is uh, I'm trying to get uh, a common divisor, uh, greatest common divisor for all these three numbers. So like when I add 5 and 4 over here, it's 9. 9 is a multiple of 3. So when I add 20, I mean 2 and 1, uh, it's 3. 3 plus 9 is uh, 12. When I add the digits over here, I'm getting 12. 12 is a multiple of 3. And when I add the digits over here in this number, uh, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 5 is 6. Uh, that is also a multiple of 3. So since uh, when I add the digits on each number, there is a coefficient of x to the fourth part, the coefficient of x square and the constant. So everything is a multiple of three. So the greatest common divisor for all these three numbers is three. So we can factor three out. If I factor three out, so what do I get over here? For that, I have to divide uh, this term um, by the one I factor out three. So when I divide this one by three, three goes into three one times, three goes into 54, uh, 18 times. So we can write 18 x to the fourth power and to know what I have over here, I have to divide this one by 3. So when I do so, 3 goes into 3 1 times, 3 goes into 21 7 times, and 3 goes into 9 uh, 3 times. So I am getting uh, 73 x square. And to know what I have over here, I have to divide this one by the one I factored. So 3 goes into 3 1 times, 3 goes into 10 uh, 3 times, and I have 1 left in 10. So it has to be taken along with the next digit, it's 15. So when uh, 3 goes into 15, 5 times. So when I divide 105 by 3, I am getting 35. Okay, now, uh, so I factor 3 out uh, from the given uh, quartic uh, function. Okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, 3 times 18. Uh, this I'm going to write this x to the fourth power as uh, x square whole square positive 73 times x square positive 35. So here you may have a question. Why should I write this x to the fourth power as x square also? Uh, so to make the factoring process easier, I'm doing so. Because when I write this x to the fourth power as x square whole square, here I'm getting x square, I'm getting x square. Now I can plug in a new variable for this x square so that I'll be getting a quadratic equation. So when I get quadratic equation, I can factor it easily. So that's the reason uh, behind writing this x to the fourth power as x square or x square. Okay, now as in a new variable, uh, there is let y equals to x square. Okay, then we have three times uh, 18. So for this x square, we can plug in the new variable y. Since we have square over here, then it will become 18 y square positive 73 and for this x square we can plug in y positive 35. Okay now it's a quadratic uh, expression uh, in the variable y. Now we should try to factor uh, this quadratic uh, expression. Okay so when I want to, to factor a quadratic expression what I need is I have to multiply the constant term by the coefficient of x square. So when I multiply 35 positive 35 by this positive 18 I am getting a uh, positive 630. Okay now what I need to do is I have to get uh, two factors of for this uh, positive 630 so that the product of the two factors equals to positive 630 and the sum of the two factors equals to the coefficient of uh, y that's in the middle term positive 73. Okay, so here uh, so we have positive sign that is a constant time is having positive sign. So the two factors I'm going, uh, I'm going to write over here uh, must be either positive or negative. We cannot have different signs for the two factors. So because if we take positive sign over here, positive sign over here, I'm taking positive sign for both the factors. So the product when I multiply positive and positive, I'm getting positive. In case if I take a negative sign for both the factors, negative times negative will become positive. Um, but in this case, I must take a positive sign for both the factors because when I multiply them, I'm getting positive. When I add them, I'll be getting a positive value. So because here the coefficient of uh, y is positive. So that's the reason I'm saying. So both the factors over here must be uh, positive. Okay, since uh, this constant term ends with the digit 0, and also it's a little a large number, 630. So I think uh, the two factors I'm getting over here, uh, maybe two digit number. Here we have a two digit number, here we have a two digit number. So each factor I assume has two digit numbers. 
So since it ends with the zero, uh, so uh, there are two possible cases. It is uh, one of the factors uh, can be taken as a multiple of 10. That is multiple of 10 means it ends with zero. The other factor can be any number. When you take one of the factors as a multiple of zero, the other factor you can take any number 15 or 17, 20, something like this. So for example, even if you take 25, four, so just one example, I'm taking a random number 24. So what will happen if when I multiply these two numbers, what do I get? So just multiply the digit at the ones place over here, digit at the ones place over here. Zero times four is zero. So in the product of these two numbers, I will result zero at the ones place because as we have over here in the constant. So because when I multiply these two numbers or two factors over here, I must get I must get a product with zero at the ones place because here we have zero. So not only 24, even if I take 26 or 27, whatever number I write over here, since it's a multiple of 10, when I multiply uh, the multiple of 10 by any number, it will give a product with zero at the ones place. This is one possible case. The second possible case is I can uh, take uh, one of the factors as a two digit number with five at the ones place. If I take five at the ones place, then the other factor has to be an even number. For example, 24 means like when I multiply the digits at the ones place, what will happen? Five times four is 20. So the product will result with zero at the ones place as we have over here. So you can take any even number as a factor, not only 24. If I take 22, five times two is 10, it ends with zero. Or if I take 26, five times six is 30. Okay, so there are two possible cases. So one of the factors has to be a multiple of 10 or one of the factors has to be a multiple of five. Okay, now first let me try uh, with one of the factors as a multiple of 10, uh, particularly uh, the smallest multiple of 10 is just 10. Okay, so when I, when I take uh, one of the factors as a multiple of 10, particularly the 10, then what must be the other factor? So uh, when I multiply these two factors, it has to be equals to positive 630, so it has to be positive 10. So then this number has to be obviously 63. So that uh, when I multiply positive 10 and positive 63, I'm getting positive 630. At the same time, it has to meet uh, one more condition. That is when I add these two values of positive 10 and positive 63, which is positive 73, it must be equal. I mean, the sum of the two factors must be equal to the middle uh, value. That is a coefficient of Y over here. So luckily in the first trial itself, we got success. So because when I multiply these two factors, positive 10 and positive 63, I'm getting positive 630 over here. When I add uh, these two factors, uh, positive 10 and positive 63, I'm getting positive 73, which is a coefficient of y over here. Okay, now let's factor uh, this quadratic expression over here. Let me continue. So 3 uh, times 18 uh, y square positive. Uh, now we can uh, split up the middle term 73y using these two factors, positive 10 and positive 63. So we can write this positive 73y as a positive 10y, positive uh, 63y, positive 35. So already we have, you would have learned uh, this stuff uh, in your uh, school days, like factoring quadratic expression. Okay, now three times. So what is the greatest common divisor for the first two terms, 18y square and 10y? So clearly it's uh, 2y. So 2y is the greatest common divisor. If I factor 2y out, then I'm getting 9y positive 5. And also you can verify when I multiply 2y and 9y, I'm getting 18y square. When I multiply this 2y and 5, I'm getting 10y. Okay, now, uh, what is the greatest common divisor for these uh, two numbers? I mean, two terms, the 63y and 35. Both 63 and 35 are multiples of uh, 7, so we can factor 7 out. If I factor 7 out, I'm getting 9y positive 5. And also, you can verify the factoring what we have done over here. 7 times 9y is 63y, 7 times 5 is 35. Okay, now uh, three times. Uh, okay, so what's the greatest common divisor for these two terms? Obviously, 9y positive 5. So we can factor 9y positive uh, 5 from these two terms. Then uh, I have 2y left in the first term and uh, 7, positive 7 left in the second term. Okay, now uh, we have completed factoring. Uh, actually, y is a variable uh, which was taken by us. Now it has to be replaced by the original stuff x square. So for each y, we have to plug in this x square. So then I'm getting 9 times x square, positive 5, uh, 2 times x square, positive 7. Okay, now uh, I just factor the given quadratic function completely. Okay, now let's compare uh, this one and uh, the one we have in the question that is k times a x square positive b times a x square pass to D. Our aim is to get the product of AB, the smallest possible value of AB. So that what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider only this particular factor. The reason is uh, only this factor contains A and B. We need the value of A and B. Okay, so both the factors over here uh, are in the form of AX square positive B. So for example, if I can compare this uh, AX square positive B with the 9X square positive 5, what will happen? Let me write AX square positive B over here. 
So when I compare uh, one of the factors uh, in the given question with 9x square positive 5, so like at the place of A, what do we have? We have uh, 9, uh, that is A equals to 9. And at the place of B, we have uh, 5. So B equals to 5. But we need uh, the product of AB. So now let me multiply A and B. That is uh, 9 times 5, which is equal to 45. So when I compare the factor AX square positive B with 9X square positive 5, I'm getting A equals to 9, B equals to 5. And the, the product AB is equal to 45. At the same time, uh, like uh, this one, 2x square positive 7 is also in, is, uh, in the form of ax square positive b. So we have to compare this ax square positive b with this one also. Okay, let me do the comparison. That is, I'm going to compare this ax square positive b with this one. So ax square positive b. Okay, now when I compare this 2x square positive 7 and ax square positive b, what value do I have for a? At the place of a, we have 2. That is, a is equal to 2. At the place of b, we have uh, 7. So b is equal to 7. Now let's find the product uh, AB that is uh, 2 times A is 2 and B is 7. I am getting 14. So I get uh, two values uh, for the product AB. One is uh, 45 and the other one is 14. But we need the smallest possible value of AB. So the smallest possible value of AB is clearly it's uh, 14.